Shabbat Shalom. In this week's Pasha, Pasha Miketz, we read about the story of Joseph and how he uh, languishes in prison, how he's redeemed, he interprets the dream of Pharaoh, and years go by. There's a famine now in the land of Canaan, and the brothers go down to Egypt. We read about how they are, how they are uh, ostracized and attacked by the, uh, by the viceroy. Shimon is arrested. They're allowed to go back on condition that they bring the youngest brother, Benjamin, down to Mitzrayim. Jacob at first refuses, but eventually allows them to take Benjamin down to Egypt. But in order to try and calm and placate the, uh, the viceroy, Jacob will send down a whole lot of food, money, to try and show the, 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 the viceroy that he is indeed a man of stature, and whatever his brothers, uh, the sons have said, are indeed true. I was quite struck by the following. When one reads through the Bible, it's important to have commentary because quite often we know we miss out on the context of the text and the greatest kind of Jewish commentator is someone by the name of Rashi, Rabbi Shlomo ben Yitzchak, born in 1040 and lived till 1105 in Troyes, France. Rashi is a master commentator. Nothing is uh, hidden from him. He is a mastery of, of, of the Bible. In a very uh, short uh, couple of poor words, he is able to transform and explain the text. One cannot study the entire Talmud without relying on the commentary of Rashi. So imagine my surprise in this week's Torah reading. When Rashi uh, looks at the, uh, the gifts that Jacob is sending down to Joseph, or the viceroy, because he doesn't know it's Joseph yet, and he comes across the word in the Torah called botnim, to which Rashi responds, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this means. Unbelievable. The greatest commentator on the Bible, on the Talmud, looks at a word and does not have an answer. Now I read this commentary, and I looked at, oh, well, if Rashi doesn't have a commentary, maybe someone else has. But in fact, Rashi himself offers an explanation as to what the word means. So why then, if he has an explanation, does he use the word, I don't know what it means? And the answer is so powerful and so meaningful. Rashi says, there is an answer. It just doesn't work for me. I can't, it doesn't make sense for me. So I don't know what the text is saying. Now, this teaches us two things. Number one, when Rashi does say something, obviously he knows what he's talking about. And he believes that this is the truth, the truth and, uh, and the correct meaning of the text. But more importantly, Rashi gives us something so precious. When he sees the words, I don't know the meaning of the text, it teaches us the art of humility when you are studying Torah. In order to learn, in order to grow as a person, one has to have humility. One needs to realize that you don't know everything. Because only when you have humility are you open to hearing and learning different ideas. And what greater teacher than the greatest commentator on the Bible, Rashi himself, using those words, I just don't know. So why not train ourselves in the art of using this phrase, I don't know. People are always asking questions. And we come across as fools when we offer solutions. Train yourself in the art of, I just don't know. And an amazing thing happens. No student of mine has ever looked at me sk sk with a slight eye and go, Oh, this rabbi's bad news. He's useless. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The student preferred... Well, the congregant prefers, when I say I don't know what it means, let me go and find an answer, I'll get back to you, then trying to say something and suck it out of my thumb. They know I don't know what I'm talking about, and the truth is, neither do I. And how often do we come across people who come and talk as if they know everything? We see very quickly that they don't know what they're talking about. So Rashi's humility in this week's parasha of saying, I don't know what the text means or what this is trying to tell me, is such a powerful lesson for each and every one of us to apply to ourselves. A bit of humility can, uh, can be and is the source of greatness. Shabbat Shalom. 
Hi, this is Rabbi Lua, and if you've enjoyed the content of the sermons and the ideas that have been expressed in the YouTube video, please hit that first subscription button and notification bell and share the videos with friends. We'd love to grow the channel and love to engage with you. Please share your comments in the section below. I'd love to hear from you. Have an amazing day. Thank you.